why I love sandal sides. Hello to all you lovely people out there. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. I had this little idea floating around in my head where I just gush about the media that I love and why I personally love them and shared with you in video form. And hey, what better way to start this than with a web series that arguably most of you came from in the first place. What is Sanders Sites? Sanders Sites is a web series created by Thomas Sanders with the help of his talented friends and writing team, where each episode can have a runtime from five minutes and later as the series is going on up to a whole 50 minutes. Thomas is known to a lot of people through his Vine career, where he produced short comedy sketches and showed up his singing ability. This elusive creature has been dwelling in this room for the past three days. And oh my goodness, there it is! It grabs some food and it's gone. Can't believe they think they're the cuter couple. We'll show them. We're totally cuter. Oh yeah. You think you're cuter than us? Yep. No Let's way! Yeah, seriously! Way. Valerie, you make our spirits lighter with the slightest of ease. Before the platform regrettably died, and then he migrated, like a lot of Viners, to YouTube. The first episode of Sanders Sides dropped on October 19, 2016, titled My True Identity, in which Thomas plays the character Thomas Sanders, a version of himself created for the series, and introduces various aspects of his personality that are embodied by different characters that he also plays. Kinda if Riley's emotions from Pixar's Inside Out could just jump out of Riley's head and directly talk and interact with her. And they all look like her. Though in Thomas's case, his different aspects are not correlated to a specific feeling like sadness, anger or joy, but multiple emotions, mannerisms and activities. <laughs> I didn't want to admit I was a bit confused by that. He's such a big Disney fan, I would have thought he'd see how similar we are to the concept of Inside Out. What? It oh my... You think you heard me? My life is a lie! The first episode introduces the teacher, logic, the dad, morality, and the prince, creativity. They are also repurposed characters from Thomas Vine days, which he to this day makes short videos about, but are distinctly different versions from their Sanders Sides incarnation. So as far as we know, his short videos, TikToks and Vines are not canon to the web series. Hey! Dress code. Let's go, I'm ready! Oh, let's go. Nice to meet you, Ready. I'm Dad. Ah! I'll never have her! And why is that? Because I love you. I just can't even! The teacher, aside from logic being the core trait, has also a thirst for knowledge, a deep appreciation for organization, Sherlock Holmes, and unicorn onesies. And despite being mostly calm, experiences great frustrations and debates with the other sides, especially regarding emotional conflicts that he claims not to understand or have feelings of his own, which is a total lie. <laughs> Falsehood! <clears throat> Excuse me. The dad, also known as Morality, is bizarrely both a parental figure and the inner child. He is the core of a lot of Thomas' feelings, loving cartoons and dogs. Puppies? What? You can conjure puppies? Shh, don't tell anyone. Ah! The Prince is a representation of Thomas' creativity, a product of pure fantasy. The literal dragon slaying while singing Disney Prince of your dreams being not only the fanciful, passionate side, but also represents Thomas' character traits that are deemed more, quote-unquote, feminine by societal standards. Excuse me, I am still a man, a manly man, a man who is manly! Later in the series, the characterizations only get deeper, and the sides develop some unique chemistry with each other, depending on the combination of who they are interacting with and what the topic is about. All of the sites also have, as a product of Thomas' imagination, some unique abilities like shape-shifting and modifying their body and appearances in other unique ways. We'll gladly explain it to you. Whoa, whoa, what the? Ah! Get it! Get it back! <sighs> 
This series is structured in vlog format, where the character Thomas first speaks directly to the audience about the conflicts he faces in his daily life. Then one or multiple of his sides pop up to work through his issues in a self-reflectory manner by arguing with each other and discussing their different viewpoints about the topic through their perspectives. This series is framed through half of a fourth wall breaking meta view and half real life drama. How much of the series is based on real life events and how much is fiction is kind of left up in the air though. The characters are aware that this is a scripted video series, but take the conflict at play very seriously. They discuss a lot of themes from more lighthearted topics like the dark side of Disney and musical episodes about Christmas to nuanced discussions about moving on from a breakup. Can lying be good? And how to deal with intrusive thoughts? A simple setup with complex themes. Ah, that is right up my alley. <laughs> the series arguably first gets really intriguing with episode 3, taking on anxiety with Lily Singh. That introduces a more negative side of Thomas. His personification of anxiety. Hey. What the heck? Oh, I'm sorry. Was I not wanted at this exact second? A sarcastic emo nightmare character that first seemed to love to tease and taunt Thomas and didn't really get along with the rest of the sides. That introduction honestly opened the door for some fascinating ideas. Wait, there is a new side? And one of that that seems really the opposite of the already introduced more positive traits? If anxiety is such a strong part of Thomas that it manifested in a fully developed side, what consequences does that bring? And more importantly and intriguing, are there others? So if anything that I've talked about so far appeals to you, I encourage you to stop the video for now, watch Sanderset yourself and come back after you've finished. At the time of recording, there are 31 videos related to the overarching story released, including the Aside spin-off, which sounds like a lot, but only rounds up to 8-9 hours of your viewing pleasure, <laughs> if my math checks out. Since the earlier episodes are only like 5-10 to 10 minutes long most of the time, so, hey, pour yourself a beverage of your choice, get a snack, cuddle up in your own unicorn or cat onesie, and make an evening out of it. You won't regret it. So now, without further ado, to those who already are dedicated fenders, and to those who listened to me, watched everything, came back, and are now dedicated fenders themselves, <laughs> let's head into spoiler territory. How did I find Sanders' sights? I stumbled across the series and Thomas Sanders, the man, the legend himself, first in a more than <laughs> roundabout way. I was, at the time, a huge Steam Universe fan and uh, still am to be honest, <laughs> and was watching clip after clip, song after song of the show. So much that YouTube must have taken notice and began recommending me a particular video. What Steven Universe teaches us about relationships. Cartoon Therapy by Thomas Sanders. So, as the deprived fan in the middle of another by now infamous show hiatuses that I was, of course, began sucking up all of the new and even remotely related content I could grab my fingers on. And boom, immediately fell in love with the whole video. Like, what an absolute gem. Get it? Gem? Uh, I'll see myself out. <laughs> so I checked out the channel to see if there would be other Steam Universe content for me to watch. Ah, such a one-track mind. But at the time there wasn't really anything that piqued my interest. No other Steam Universe or cartoon therapy video and the Avatar one released so much later. So with an attention span of uh, pff, five minutes, I dropped the channel and probably just returned watching the same Steam Universe clips 10 times in a row. You know which one I'm talking about. It's stronger than you. Of course it's stronger than you. It's a legend. And at that point, the YouTube algorithm must have taken that personally. Because days and weeks after that, YouTube insistently recommended another video from the same channel 
over and over and over again. This person's fandom trash, so liking Steam Universe is not far from liking Mr. Lightning Scarf Wizarding School. So here, watch this video already. Uh, first off, root. Second, yeah, honestly, flawless logic. At that point, Miss Just Kidding Rolling had not made herself and the Wizarding World completely unlikable to me and ruined my HP experience. So yeah, good job, YouTube. So yeah, I caved in. Yep. I started my Santa set experience exactly how I started my downfall into the rabbit hole that is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Completely in the middle of the story with zero context at all that I was watching a part of a continuated story. You know, once is a chance, twice is coincident. Third time it's a pattern. I just can't watch media like a normal person. I started, like really, I have to emphasize this. I started with the episode that had already all character names revealed, them sporting their new iconic looks, and having a major plot point of accepting anxiety into the group resolved. But honestly, it didn't take that much away from my viewing experience. Here's my hot take of the day. If a series or a movie is good, then spoilers won't ruin it. And Sandicides is a freaking good series. It was actually a perfect introduction to the series. Not only because I already got a feeling for the characters and their relationships to each other and what the series as a concept is about. No, this episode was quality, lengthwise and from a writing point of view much more akin to the newer episodes of the series while maintaining the lighthearted tone of the first episodes. So it's a perfect mixture of what the series started out as and what it grew up to be eventually. From that point on, I got... Don't hook, you ruined it. Yeah, I probably binged watched this series and, let's be honest, Thomas' entire channel at the exact same day to the at the time newest episode, Can Lying Be Good? Which meant I had an immediate incentive to keep following the series and subscribe if I wasn't by any chance already in love. Because, haha, you already guessed it, Best Snake Boy got introduced and had me screaming with excitement. You called. Yeah, see! <laughs> and just as I did with Steven Universe, I forced my friend Holly to watch it so I can just talk to someone about this cool thing. I discovered and pulled her into the fan with me and so far... It's been an absolute joy. One of my favorite pastimes is to tell no tech Granny Holly when Thomas tweets behind the scenes stuff. So much so that it kind of became a ritual between. Wait. What? Season finale. Season finale! We have actual seasons in this series? Yeah, boy, let's go! What did Sandersides teach me? Okay, hands up if the series has simultaneously wrecked you emotionally while also teaching you actual real important advice on dealing with your mental health. Yeah, <laughs> I thought so. The thing that first and foremost really has become part of my life, especially when dealing with emotional stress, you might have already guessed it, is the breathing technique. Thomas, remember what you've learned. Breathe in for four seconds. Hold your breath for seven seconds. Now breathe out for eight seconds. Keep it up, Thomas. That's good. Keep going. I kind of beforehand knew that steady breathing is supposed to calm you down, but it just never did the trick for me until that particular rhythm of four, seven, eight. And... That alone has really changed my coping mechanism and my asthma substantially, which I am just so grateful for. The second thing I noticed that is just really cool, the way the whole concept of light and dark sides really mushes into an entire gray area. Your most positive traits can simultaneously be your worst attributes under stressful circumstances. That is the thing that we have so far seen from all of the sides. You need to get a real job. Hey, yeah, like being a movie star. No, a real job. <sighs> Treating yourself 
is something that you can take too far. You can take anything too far, Patton. You've taken things too far. Oh, what did I make you do? Patton, Virgil, I... I'm getting this all wrong, and I'm hurting you in the process. Oh, jeez, he's calling me back. Pick it up! Pick Don't! it up! I actually think you were right to not want me around. I've always aimed to protect you, but lately... It feels like I've been keeping you from doing anything. There is always a need for balance. And as long as you can recognize your mistakes and missteps and work on correcting that in the future, you're good to go. If anything can be taken away from the series as a whole, it's the need for balance. Listening to all your sides equally, trying to have a healthy work and quality time balance. The need to be there for your friend, but not neglecting yourself in the process. And the voices of the quote-unquote dark sides themselves are also not only easy to have sympathy for, but just as the light sides traits can be twisted into negative behaviors, aspects of Janus and Remus can easily be worked into positive traits, or at least neutral. It is not black and white, dark or light. It is a big gray area. Every sight in moderation make up a better whole Thomas. Janus, for all intents and purposes, was right in the selfishness versus selflessness episodes. Thomas needed to be honest with himself and Lee and Mary Lee about his desires, and only under those circumstances could an open discussion between the sides actually have been more productive and might have come to an outcome with less regrets and hardships. The whole episode of negative thinking. Yeah, I will not elaborate further. I can't count how many times I needed to rewatch Logan's lectures about jumping to conclusions, overgeneralizing, magnifying one mistakes, and filtering out what's going fine. You know the episode is pretty straightforward, but God do I need that straightforwardness sometimes. While rewatching the series, I really related to the stark contrast of the first episodes to the latest. At the beginning, especially in those shorter episodes, Thomas and the Sides give such excellent advice and clearly seem to understand what they are supposed to do, how to cut themselves some slack, etc. What can we do to fix this? The only thing to do? Compromise. Compromise. Dad guy. You encourage me to do what's right and to strive to do the most good in this world that I possibly can. And I appreciate that. But a lot of times I spread myself too thin. I also tend to make others a priority over me and their feelings a priority over mine. And many times that's great. It's necessary. But other times I need to take time to make myself the priority and make sure I'm doing okay. Oh, of course! I never wanted you to feel like you couldn't. But later, when they are put in certain situations, all that good advice and knowledge just flies out the window and they react different. Which is probably the most relatable thing I took from the series, because I know that to a T. And a lot of you probably also do. Talking the talk and then walking the walk, two completely different beasts. Here's some examples. When I'm drawing and try to improve my skills, I am learning what I need to do and technically understand all the necessary steps. I can clearly see it in my head, but when it comes to the execution... Uh, flop. <laughs> or when a friend talks negatively about themselves, how they don't think they deserve the help they need because they are not sick enough and would steal the place from someone else. Or other self-deprecating nonsense. Gosh, it is always so easy to just punch them with my unlimited love and shake the stupid out of them. You deserve happiness. You're clearly not well. Think about yourself. You are worthy. Take care of yourself. But then, when applying the same advice to yourself, yeah, that is not happening. Crickets. Absolute crickets. <laughs> Doing what you know is right and healthy is challenging. And listening to your own advice can sometimes be the most difficult thing to do. That's okay! The important thing to keep in mind is nobody's perfect. Everyone comes with their own flaws. Well, nobody's perfect. Except for Thomas! He loves his friends! Pat 
and honey, darling, sweetie, baby. I know you're very much trying to do your best. I'm not singling you out because I know the other sides are doing it too. You're not only very much appreciated, but deeply loved. And I will not hold it against you in the future at all. Don't worry about that. But what the heckity heck five apps in one pack nonsense was that? It's fine, it's fine. I literally can't stay mad at you. But if the series has taught me anything, it's that where you are in life, in life, it's precisely where you need to be. And the only direction to go is forward, one step at a time. Oh, the series is making me feel things. And then it hits me. I'm watching one dude play several characters by himself, and these are in fact not other actors. Like, I don't know how you do it, Thomas, but somehow you are so good at acting that I totally forget that when I watch your videos. Like, great job, 11 out of 10. There is so much this series in its runtime has taught me so far. Techniques and coping mechanisms to deal with my own brand of anxiety, detailed explanations of social patterns and the human mind. I seriously can't wait for what future episodes are going to teach me. I can confidently say that my life is just better with the series in it. Oh gosh, there's probably even more that I love, and I probably can't count how many scenes I just make me giddy. <sighs> you know what? I lied. I totally can. Lightning round! Top 10 Xenocide's moments that aren't in any particular order, but I think are pretty darn cool, and I still wanted to call it a top 10. Okay, then you create a gift to give them. A drawing! Here you go. But that could be just taken as a gift from a friend. Wow, thanks! Mm, or worse. Wow, this is horrible. I never realized how stupid and untalented you are. <laughs> well, I'm hopelessly crushed. Ha, me when I show my drunks to my dad and get no reactions out of him. Love you, Papa. <laughs> I've been helping to figure this out. I am the cause of this, but I am also the solution to a problem I have caused and will inevitably resolve. Am I in a paradoxical loop where I endlessly generate a problem and try to solve it like a snake devouring its own tail in order to satiate its hunger? Okay, calm down, time. It's a lot simpler than whatever you're trying to say. That was dark even for me. Uh, I love foreshadowing. Also, Logan, I totally feel you. The Sherlock Holmes numbers are top tier. You are the man. Oh, well, that's kind of your anxiety. No, you look like the man. I fight the man. I want to fight you now. Whoa. Ah, uh, same Virgil. Let's eat the rich and overthrow the bourgeoisie, my comrade. <laughs> uh, what? Hey, kiddo, not trying to bother you. Just made you a little something for the room. Hope to see you soon. He never really was good at art. Okay, this is just such a nice moment. Also, a great callback to the one Valerie Rose. Why is that now, Patton? Because he's my hero. We get it! You're adorable! Any quote that I can use in any situations with my friends is worth keeping around. It is a brilliant, iridescent display, though I still say you could have gone with even more colors. Full rainbow next time! <gasps> Awful idea. Oh, I'm already full rainbow all the time. What? Ah! You did not. Now with this scene, I actually have a real issue. Come on, Thomas. It could have been gayer. <laughs> Logic! How about it? Well... Too bad you're doing it! Oh, yes, I'm bad, so I'm bad, you know you have a good bit on your head when fans like Holly and me can't go spending time together without rapping this masterpiece at least once. The other musical numbers and just the whole soundtrack also just slaps hard. I can't choose amongst any of my darling babies, so I'm going to just go ahead and say that they're all my favorites and I'm going to start singing the entire anthology starting with Someday My Prince Will Come. <clears throat> so once told, told me, me the, the world, world was gonna roll me. I ain't, I ain't the, the sharpest tool in the shit. Okay, Roman wanting to sing. Someday my prince will come being interrupted by all stars. <laughs> A literal Disney prince is being slapped in the face by DreamWorks anti Disney film Shrek. Like, I can't. This shit is too funny. Thanks, everyone. Well, 
almost everyone. I mean, it's cool to see you all trying to be helpful. Well, most of you. Oh, gosh, I'm such a sucker for parallels. And hey, if we're already here, this whole scene. And that you make us better. Can I even say something that's not already been said by the fandom? Roman's character growth, the sincerity, Virgil's happy soft smile at the end. It is pure perfection. The character that moved me most. I'd like to end the video with the part of the series that gave me the biggest gut punch so far and the character that affected me the most. I want a preference that I don't have a favorite side and I enjoy each of them for different reasons. I couldn't rank them even if I wanted to. I love these characters equally. But the storyline we've seen unfold so far for this character spoke to me so personally that I can't not mention it in a video where I try to explain why I love this series so much. Roman started out as a fairly simple character, just like the rest, whose deeper layers would reveal itself the more you paid attention to him. And even though he often came off as self-centered, egotistical, or prideful, the thing he said to Virgil applies as much to the emo as it does to him, except in a very different way. And you let his excitement and passion for performance take over. I think that's as good a sign as any that you're willing to work as a team. Virgil is a natural team player. We can see it in a lot of episodes where he willingly teams up with Patton and gets other sides like Logan to help when he is out of his depth, while Roman is clearly not such a willing participant. I get what you two are saying, and I do care about that. But here's the thing. I don't really care about that. But throughout the series, he is kinda expected to be a team player by the others. The things he wants always come in conflict with the needs of the other sides. And while compromises are made between all of them, something just feels off to me when it comes to Roman's desires. Roman wants to fearlessly pursue his dreams. Virgil needs Thomas to consider the pitfalls. Roman wants to continue to work as a creative. Logan needs Thomas to be taken seriously. Roman wants to go to the callback. Patton needs Thomas to be a good friend. And as time goes on, when it comes down to a decision, in a lot of cases, he prioritizes the others before himself. He is a pure paradox, which is even evident by him being a prince. He wants to be the center of attention, the hero, the star of the show. Never fear, your creativity is here. You think we can come up with something that's new and exciting? Of course I can! I've always been here fighting for you! Your happiness is my mission! Do you trust me? What? Do you trust me? I don't know. See? Why not? But just like a prince in a fairy tale, he slays the dragon to save others even when it puts himself at risk. Roman is becoming self-sacrificial to a fault. We can see that clear as day in the wedding conflict. So the wedding is more important? I, uh, yeah. Well, when is it enough? Trees? No, selfishness! How long must we act selfishly until Thomas is ready to start putting more good into the world? Since he has always been put in the bag or needed to share the stage. You try to create art, but you shackle your creativity. He probably, with time, felt more and more insecure. Unworthy. His desires, his hopes, his dreams come second. He seeks validation from the others so much and desperately tries to please them. I can't let you down. We can see that especially with Logan and Patton in the episodes Why do we get out of bed in the morning? Learning new things about ourselves and especially the selfishness versus selflessness two-parter. Even though he is not shy to voice what he wants and to butt heads with the others We disagree on many things. Yeah, Understatement much? He seeks their approval. 
It's so hard to create anything that I'm proud of when it's critiqued so harshly by you. What? Nothing ever seems to be good enough, professional enough, serious enough for you. And despite all of this, still trying to go forward, even though he is being told that he is loved and needed, and we know that's the case. We can see it. He can't believe it anymore when it's said, because it is not shown to him. Roman, everything's gonna be okay, kiddo. We love you. Right. And that broke me. As a creative, heck, as an artist, that wrecked me. Whether it's changing plans, needing to take care of yourself, chores on a daily basis, the feeling of others, the state of your own mental health, something always comes first. All the ideas you have for future art projects, books, films, illustrations, comics, animations, videos, you will never be able to make all of them in a lifetime. At the end of the day, just by living your life, they always come second. There is no perfect balance. It's still completely doable if you chart it out thusly. You must allocate an adequate amount of time for sleeping, your six daily meals, dental hygiene, general hygiene, exercise, work, and um, pursuing your dreams, I guess. Wow, you've really got it all worked out, huh, Logan? Yes. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Or totally wrong, and Thomas and his friends have something completely different in mind. And hey, if you have another interpretation of that whole mess, leave a comment below, I'd love to read it. But it just seems to me that Roman has been dragged through the series from the very beginning, and his confidence is slowly being chipped away bit by bit. His ideas being criticized and shafted. Why don't you want to listen to me more? This whole thing could have been avoided if you did. The popularity contest he has with Logan. I am not blind to the reality that Logan has steadily grown more popular than me. I'm, I'm the, the most, most important, important side here. here. The need to justify his wants and needs. I know you're lying, Roman. Like I said, everything has a purpose. And you're denying yours. You want that call back so bad and it will crush you if we miss it. Feeling betrayed by Janice? Actually glad you brought up the oxygen mask illustration again, Patton. Yeah, and that means you're not glad, right? Of course not. He's just trying to build up a false confidence in you so that you can plummet to even greater depths. Dream is showing up. It's a little like looking into a funhouse mirror. It shows you everything you don't want to be. And all of that comes to a head in putting others first. Selfishness versus selflessness. Redux. Are you guys seriously going to take his side? No, I... Over me? He... Thomas. I thought I was your hero. Y you are. <laughs> wow. I can't believe this. Did you forget that he's evil? You're not. Or you're not supposed to be. You're supposed to be good. And then these frustrating moments where he literally says that he is not doing so hot right now and is completely ignored. Excuse me. Roman, you dunce. You made a joke and now they'll think that everything's fine. Roman? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes? Are we still doing a video? Yeah, you, you know that. You didn't, like, sink out or anything. Are you good? Mm. I don't know. Oh, are you hurt at all? <sighs> My head's fine. More than anything, I feel like I was struck by a... Realization. However, the more pertinent question is, is Thomas all right? Okay, well, that's over and done with, so... Like, wow, that sucks. We have a literal emo on the show and the freaking Disney prince is a character study in angst waiting to happen. You in particular made a significant sacrifice when you sentenced Thomas to attend the wedding instead of the callback. That's the closest to an act of true selflessness that I believe is possible. And look, it served no one. <sighs> Gosh dang it. The wedding versus callback arc emotionally destroyed me. Like top 10 anime betrayals of all time. 
And it could have been entirely avoided if Thomas just freaking talked to Lee and Mary Lee. Yes, I am still bitter. Why didn't you listen to Roman? If you ever wondered why I put so much emphasis on talking with each other in my fusion series, yeah, you know why now. Oh, we could start by having an open and honest conversation about our feelings. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't like that. I'd rather go live in a garbage can. Honestly, if all of the sites would just go to a few therapy sessions from Mr. Emil Picani over here, there would be no more problems. <laughs> And just again, so there is no confusion. All of that does not mean I am demonizing the other sides just because I personally emphasize a lot with Roman in this situation. The great thing about this series is that it is so easy to look at the same problem from different points of views. If I just try a bit, I can easily emphasize with Patton in the callback situation. I can 100% see Logan's point of view and trying to be taken seriously. Genocide makes total sense to me. And of course I know where Remus is coming from. And yes, Virgil's points and concerns are important and heckin' valid. Hashtag Patton, Logan, Virgil, Janice and Remus did nothing wrong and I stand. <laughs> I guess it's just because of my own affinity for art that my mind focused on the creative side getting shut down again and again and again. Again, I love them all. They all take the number one spot in my ranking. But gosh, I just hope Thomas as the Sanderside's protagonist gets to have some nice things for a change. Like, I hope this new boyfriend thing will work out. Because not, I am going to scream. Sanderside as a whole has given me more than I can ever give back. It was the inspirational kick in the butt I needed to try out animating, and so many videos came out of it. It gave me another series to talk to my dear sweet Holly about. It even gave me a small community that actually seems to care a bit about my art, and that is just mind-blowing to me. So with all my heart, thank you, Thomas. Thank you to the creative heads behind the series. You're doing such a good job as far as I'm concerned. And thank you guys for watching this video. Getting to know yourself can be quite the awesome adventure, and hopefully it's an adventure that never ends. Oh my stars, how do these video essays talk for so long? My entire throat hurts! Oh well, this was a new experience. I hope you liked this video of me rambling why I personally love this freaking series so much. What are your own reasons? Why do you like Xenocides? Which story arc to now or side did affect you the most? Could you manage to pick a favorite side? Let me hear your thoughts. I honestly don't know if I could even express half of my thoughts regarding this amazing series, but I try to at least keep it cohesive enough. Will there be more videos of this kind? I don't know. <laughs> it honestly depends if you would like hearing me talk excessively about things I love. I'd like to gush about other properties like Star Trek, Steam Universe, or JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, but uh, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. And if you further want to support me and my endeavors, you can make a small donation over on my Ko-Fi. Every bit helps, to be honest. Anyways, this is all, folks. Don't forget to stay fluffy. Bye!